we're going to start our next section, which is 2.5, and it's about infinite limits. So we're going to start by looking at an example. Let's look at a function. Consider the function 3 over x minus 2. Now I know this function is not defined at x equals 2. If I plugged in 2, I would get 0 in the denominator. But I want to know, I still want to know what happens near 2. So let's go back to when we made our table to figure out limits. So I'm going to start with some values a little bit smaller than 2. So let's start with 1.5. 1.9, 1.99. And also in my table, I want to look at values just slightly larger than 2. So we'll do 2.001, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04. And we'll also look at 2.5. So I'm going to fill in, you're going to plug in these numbers right here into this function right here. And I'm going to fill in what we get. So if we put 1.5 in, you'll get negative 6, negative 30, negative 300. And then I'm going to start over here now. If I put in 2.5, you'll get 6, 30, 300. I included one extra value over here, 3,000. All right, so I'm going to erase our arrows now, and we're going to look at this table. So I want to look at the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of 3 over x minus 2. So I'm looking at the left of 2, which means I'm a little bit smaller. So read the table going this way. And what's happening to my y values? They're all negative. And if you see, they're getting very negative. Negative 6, negative 30, negative 300. So they're starting to get pretty uh, small there. So it looks like these numbers are just going to keep going more and more negative. So if I had to guess, this limit would be negative infinity. And if I look at the other one-sided limit, as I approach 2 from the right, so look at our table now. We're going to look on the right-hand side. As I approach 2 from the right, what's happening to my numbers, my y values? 630, 300, 3000, they're getting really, really big. So my guess here would be that this limit would be infinity. Now, one way you could verify this, you could look at the graph of this function. So let's graph the function three over x minus two. And if you have something graphed this function for you, your calculator or a program, your graph should look something like the following. Put in it'll look like that. And it'll look like that. So there's my two pieces. And if I look as I approach two from the left, what's happening? I'm dropping down more and more negative. I'm going to negative infinity. If I approach two from the right, what's happening? I'm shooting up, up, up. I'm going to infinity. So what if my graph looked a little bit differently? So this time, let's not start with a function. Let me just give you the graph of a function and ask you. 
So here's a sketch of a graph. And this graph is going to look like the following. It looks something like this. And I want to know, so let's look at what happens as I approach C from the left. So here, as I go up, it's shooting up, up, up to infinity. As I approach C from the right, it's going up, up, up again to infinity. So here, the left hand and the right hand limits are the same. So I can just write that the limit as X approaches C now is going to be infinity. So remember, your left and your right hand limits have to match if you're not doing a one-sided limit anymore, which we're not. Okay, let's look a few more functions. We'll look at two more. I want you to determine the limit for each function as x approaches 1 from the left and from the right. So the first function we're going to look at is the function 1 over x minus 1 squared. So you're going to graph this function. And if you ask your calculator to graph this, your graph should look like This, that's one. And it would look like that. And now you should be able to answer the limit as x approaches one from the left will be infinity. The limit as x approaches one from the right is also infinity. These are the same, so if I was asked, I could actually say a little bit more. Because these are the same, I can now say that the limit as x approaches 1 is infinity. All right, let's look at one more. Let's look at this next function it'll be negative 1 over x minus 1. So again, if you ask your calculator or your program to graph this function, you should get the following picture. 1, 0. following picture. So now tell me, based on this graph, you should be able to find my two one-sided limits. Approach one from the left. What's the limit going to be? Be infinity. Approach from the right. It's going to be negative infinity.